Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Eastward. Last time we found our two protagonists were introduced to us. That was a very clunky sentence. Anyway, introduced to Sam and John. This is John. Sam is the little blonde haired girl that we will become reacquainted with in a little bit. But we found out that John's job as an underground resident of Potcroc Isle is to go and be a digger, a miner, whatever you want to call it. And along the way, we learned that there were slugs sapping the electricity away from the mining operation. So we had to go and clear those out. One of the things that I promised to do that I skipped in the end of the last episode is I ran out of bombs. Bombs are the primarily way that we go and clear out part of the cave. I went and I got more of those, so here we go. You'll definitely want to go back and get this. Optional, sure, but this will greatly improve your progress in the game. The gear part. It is part of a gear. It will do things for us in the future that we will learn about later. But for now, I don't want to spoil that. But we still have some more work to do. We cleared out the majority of the slug spawns down here, but we're not quite done. We've got Yawn down there on the electricity. We got Chuck here, who has mentioned that straight away, right up here, we have more slugs down below. Let's go ahead and get that done. Oh, uh, uh oh. Well, it looks like the doors have been sprung the wrong direction. And we are now trapped. So I guess uh, the only way forward is down. If you're enjoying this series, which has just started, by the way, if you could like the video, if you haven't already commented, please do so. And uh, subscribe to watch all of it. I promise you we're going to have a great time. This game is definitely one that I think you all enjoy just because of how weird it is. And I'm a pretty weird dude when it comes to my commentary style. So weird game, weird dude. That's weird squared. And you can't go wrong with that. So I'm sure you'll all enjoy that. We're back underground here with the horde of slugs that are continuing to propagate here. We're going to destroy their nests using the bombs that somehow are being hidden in these crates. Seems a little dangerous. But remember, once again, we've got blue slugs, we've got yellow slugs. Yellow slugs are the upgraded variety of the blue slug. Two hits for the blue slugs, three for the yellows. And the yellow ones also have electric touch. But we've done it. The hardest boss in the game completed. Every time that you complete a story mission, which in this case is clearing out the dig site, you will get another heart, very similar to Zelda. But it's not super clear on when that's going to happen, so you'll just have to go with the flow of the game, or not. Seems like our compadres, our colleagues at work, are very concerned about us. We are neck high in a cock high pie. But don't worry, we have, we have persevered, we have survived, because we are incredible, and we have narrative and vulnerability. It's very sweet of them. But uh, it seems like we're in a little bit of corporate trouble. The mayor, though? If the mayor's concerned about a business, have they seized the means of production? That's it. Apparently we weren't very productive today because we were trying to restore the power. We didn't do a whole lot of digging. But I think that uh, the writing is on the wall and Jan and Chuck are getting the H out of here. Speaking of. We have now been reacquainted with Sam. We can escape this area and face the wrath of the man in charge, the mayor himself. But first, one of my favorite songs in the game is this one, actually. I actually listen to this one quite a bit. If you haven't had a chance to, um, I might link probably, if I remember to, the soundtrack of this game. It's on Bandcamp. It's a website for music artists to host their music. And I believe this was done by Joe Kudlitz, Coldlitz, however you say it. 
but he did a great job with this game. Has a very memorable soundtrack that overall there isn't really a mess, in my opinion. But as you can see, normally we are supposed to be providing a lot more results. And it looks like, unfortunately, five sixths of us have come up a little empty. Except for Yosemite Sam, digger. All right. Look alive, everybody. Mayor Hoffman. Matt Hoffman? So once again, this is another kind of the tropey man in charge oppressing the, the bourgeoisie over top of the proletariat here. I'm assuming the thing that's supposed to be dug up is salt? I think? But yes, we have not made the mayor proud today. And he's also a little bit of a violent fella. Good question. Story of my life. Probably a question that was asked to my parents many times when I'm around. That is true. What is Sam doing here? The way that his stomach gyrates makes me very uncomfortable. But yeah, one of the things that this game does really well is it uses musical cues to move along the narrative. There will be songs that are attributed to certain characters or certain types of characters or just parts of the story to create a certain emotion. And I feel like the soundtrack does a really great job with that. But apparently school is not something that Sam is ultimately familiar with, but she needs to get a good education. Looks like Jan decided to hide in the crapper, smart call. Yeah, except for John, he has to spend it on educating a child. Ooh, what are my taxes going towards? Lame. We have been awarded a sand rube. This weird purple ball sack on a stick. Okay, great. You'll find out what those are later. They actually are pretty useful. And once again, apologies for language. You'll just have to understand that that's just kind of part of this game. But this is apparently how we're paid. Salt is a currency. Sand rupees are apparently rupees, rup rupees. And apparently it's also food, so we're being paid in food. What is this, a Walmart? Hmm. Could be worse. You guys are welcome. John is the tried and true, the silent protagonist who always comes through. But excitingly, Sam gets to go to school tomorrow. So good for her. She's going to finally get herself some book learning. Seems like she comes around the mines a lot, though, which is probably not a great place for children. But I think a school probably would be, I think. I'm not sure what kind of school this area's got, but it's got to be better than this place. And that's it. Look at this good advice from these two fellas for once. Good job, guys. But Sam's heard it all. She's a smart little whippersnapper. Shipped off to Karen. Huh. That sounds like something from some sort of mythology. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll learn about that later. Now, something apparently has gone wrong with our weapon of choice, our frying pan. Oh no, we broke it? Ooh, that's not good. Whoever Mason is potentially could fix it up for us. Very handy. The Sunnyside Ranch. Maybe we should head there. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe you'll get a little bit of a increase in strength as well. So first things first, let's go ahead and save our progress. Store these memories right back in the fridge. Good question. 
I do appreciate an appliance that does get existential with us. Thank you for that. Okay. So we have completed all that's possible to do down here in the mine so we can leave, which is great. And head over to Sunnyside Ranch. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe, is this how we get up? How do we do this? Am I going the wrong way? I might be going the wrong way. This is one of those things with this game that, um, yeah, I'm definitely going the wrong way that I have a bad habit of doing. So as many other games as you've seen, my sense of direction is negative. So you'll have to just bear with me here. Ooh, this is a little mysterious area. These mushrooms, a little foreshadowing. We'll figure out what those are later. I don't honestly even remember the way that we got into, um, into this area. So typically when I play games like this, little RPGs, uh, I just wander around forever until I find where I'm going and hope for the best. Let's see if there's anything in these actually. I don't know if I've opened any of these. Looks like the company locker room. Maybe somebody left a sandwich or a snack for us. Pretty upsetting, unfortunately. We will revolt. Son of a snake. It's a classic old person insult. The Sunnyside Ranch. Now, I don't know how to get there, but we will figure it out. I think this is the way, viewers. Second time's a charm. I don't remember if I looked in all these rooms real quick. Oh, hey. You try hard. That's true. We do need weapons. Okay. A little bit of information that we already knew. Sometimes the exposition in this game is a little bit unnecessary. A little redundant. It's not bad. It's just, you know. Okay. Yokar apparently is going to uh, have himself some robotic vittles. Don't worry, Yokar. We were able to snack on a on a very kind man's wiener deep in a cave that we've never met before. That's how you know true friendship exists. Looks like our gaming friends have also been watching a television show related to their platform. Enemy, enemy. Does anybody remember watching cartoon shows like Dragon Ball Z and whatnot back when they were still rolling out new episodes and they would always find ways to have the worst cliffhangers and teasers? You'd be stuck waiting for weeks to see it. Yeah, Sam's been working hard down in the mines. Classic child labor. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So yes, Earthborn has captivated the Potrock Isle children. It's a television show. It's also a video game. We will tap into that video game probably near the end of this game. It essentially is a Dragon Quest clone, but it is very fun. But that's not really something that is something meant to be done during the game. It's more fun to do after the game. And you do unlock the full game when you complete the entirety of this one. Seems like the anime and the video game are veering off different paths. Ooh, the post game. That's when we'll be playing the game. Very meta. A game within a game. We love that. It's a game within a game that can be played by you. So it's like a game within a game within a game. And that's a long time. Five billion years. I don't remember if the game forces you to play this right now or not, but we don't have a memory card. Honestly, it makes me think back to growing up. I was very used to playing like Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, and so I never really had to worry about memory cards until I bought my very first console by myself, which was actually a PlayStation 2. I got a copy of 
one of those Dragon Ball Z games, speaking of, and I didn't have a memory card, so I would just leave my PlayStation on overnight so that way I could play a little bit before school and then hope that I could play a little bit when I got home. Not very good, until I eventually scrounged up enough money from doing odds and ends chores to be able to buy myself one. And that's back when those memory cards were small. They're like four or five megabytes, and now you've got consoles like the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation now that come pre-installed with like terabytes of data. It's kind of wild. But now that Sam can get a memory card, she can play Earthborn, which is funny. We're being heckled by children to get her one at the Hello Grocery, just inside. Okay, so I don't know if we have to do this. I'm assuming that it's probably part of it, that it's a flag that we need to take care of. We might have to play a little bit of the game, but I intend to actually play more of it, maybe at the end as like a little bonus. So here's Chang. Cha-Chang! Where does John do his shopping? Where do you think John does the shopping at, viewers? But thanks to Chang, we can buy ourselves a memory card. Some other little items that are unfortunately out of stock for now, so just a memory card, please. Looks kind of like a Super Nintendo cartridge, or maybe more like a, an NES cartridge, to be honest. But now Sam has her own memory card. It kind of makes me think about how this isn't really a thing that is done in America, but I know that in certain Japanese arcades, they have different arcade games where you can buy a memory card, take it with you, play the game, save your progress, and come back and play, which I think is a really nice way to have a connection with your customers. Apparently John was a uh, big Earthborn player when he was younger, and now he can share that experience with Sam. Something that I'm sure many of you have done with your family, or potentially with uh, starting a new family, you would like to share that with your family someday. So there you go. Now we've got our friends are back at it. It kind of looks like a PlayStation that they're playing on top of the machine. So we have to grind to get some grand. Hirota is in the lead here. She's not listening to Four Eyes, saying you need to do some grinding maybe before you warp into the Demon King's Palace. So now Sam can play along as the fourth character. This is very exciting. This is probably one of my favorite tracks. Not entirely sure why they did a little zoom in here, only to pull back out right after that. It's kind of weird. But um, this is actually a little bit of a characterization via exposition. So you'll learn this eventually, but uh, Sam does kind of act as your de facto mage in this game, which I think is interesting. You know, John's very much your melee character and Sam takes care of the magic. Well, you got to give her a little bit of help on how to play, guys. Come on, hold her hand a little bit. And in the process, we're going to go ahead and have Kuroda catch some strays. I do think you have to play this one. I don't know if it's avoidable. I think the game actually kind of forces you to do this. But yeah, as you can see, it's very much a... Uh, it's very much a Dragon Quest clone. That even looks like the main character of Dragon Quest up there. So basically, you'll just follow along with what they tell you to do. This is on rails. Give it, give it your all here. Just the tip from Four Eyes. Definitely, you should always make sure you're careful about where you put your monkey, but definitely put your monkey in the back row. Now, this is information that um, we will uh, not really remember and probably have to do down the road. Shoot a fireball at the Demon King. Just keep using our skills here. I don't really know. Um, the value of any of this. This is a very kind of a silly meta thing to do. Uh oh, the energy sap. He's gonna suck on us, suck our energy. But we don't have any attack points left. Now this game is kind of enhanced by these items called the Pix Balls. You get these from, they're kind of like, uh, 
whatever you want to call those, um, completely forget at the top of my head. But with um, most of those, you know, most consoles nowadays have those little additions that you can add on to your. Um, I cannot think of it like what Nintendo Switch does with the little uh, figurines that you can use. I completely forget the name at the top of my head, but it's kind of like that. But yeah, this fight I don't believe is something you can win, which doesn't really matter. Oh no, the Hypno Wave. Hypno. All right, we gotta think of a way out. Come on, Four Eyes, help us out. Oh no. We're being controlled. And everything moves really fast, too. The scrolling, like, I'm not, I'm not controlling this. This is just how things go. Let's go ahead and meditate. I'm just kind of picking whatever is available just to get this through. But this actually is something that I probably will engage in earlier. You can you can beat this game, I believe. But unfortunately, the knight and his companions were never seen again. They're out for milk and cigarettes. So we were unsuccessful. Sorry, guys. Our first try was not a winner. We were not the wieners of this game. But Kuroda seems impressed, you know, for us being a newbie. Four eyes coming with a, well, actually, no one listens to me, you should have grinded. But it appears that we are going to be late for dinner. We got to hurry. See y'all tomorrow. Bye. Everybody get back. Get back home and get yourself some, some supper. Well, we could play tomorrow, but... We actually have to get to school, so maybe another time. Apparently, Kuroda is very excited for our new fledgling education. We can hang out after classes. Sounds good. And Kuroda gives us an award for hanging out. Who doesn't want to get this? So apparently, this is uh, one of the characters from Earthborn, one of the enemies. You can collect a Pix Ball. The more you get, the obviously, the more like little creatures you can spawn in the game. There's a capsule machine. You put in your tokens, you get your Pix Ball, and ta-da, there you go. Kind of a neat little addition, I suppose. We'll worry about that later, though. I remember when I was a kid, and it was always a really awesome experience when you had somebody at school who was a bigger fan of a of a video game or anything like that who would be willing to share one of their items or little creatures with you. When I was a kid, very long ago, this is going to date me immediately, um, there was a game called Crazy Bones. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that, but it, it's very much just a little tabletop game where you had these little plastic figurines that you would try to squirt across a table and knock each other's off and you get to keep them if you did. So. That is true. You ever been at school or work when all the lights go down? It's definitely pretty spoopy. But if you remember correctly, everybody, we need to head to the Sunnyside Ranch. Get our wonderful, ooh, my favorite song. Get our frying pan fixed by Mason. There he is. Nothing in the world that he can't fix. There's always somebody in your life, I'm sure, that is very handy like that. Okay. Apparently some pretty strong feminine characters in the world. We're using this frying pan for justice, and we are able to carry on the mantle. So with John, he does cook and fight with it. Okay, I'm not sure what is going on. But Mason is willing to help us out. I don't know if we owe him a favor or anything like that. Maybe we'll cook him up a nice meal in return. Seems fair. Yeah, this song, I cannot get enough of it. It's so good. So 
So Mason the Fixer has once again outdone himself. And now, because of our pot being upgraded, we should be able to whack things. There's just a lot of characters that just say things. I mean, their animations are cool and they're funny and everything, but, uh... Get the droop into the loop! They just, I don't know, some of the things they say, I think they're meant to be, like, character building and story driving, but some of them are very strange, and I don't know what they even mean. Good question. So now that we have the new frying pan, we do have the ability, if we hold the button down, whoop, we can knock the sand roop into the loop. On our first try, of course. Pretty much as standard in the d -Mike Plays industries. We're pretty good at whacking, so, you know, you can back off while we whack off. Well, because of Mason now, we've unlocked the ability to smack things a small distance. The game is pretty much fully unlocked at this point. That is true. Should probably copyright that too, buddy. Everybody's always throwing shade in this game. Everybody's a little passive-aggressive. Big Yokar's pretty a big fan of it. I don't know if Big Yokar and regular Yokar are the same thing. I have no idea. But anyway, once again, cooking is another component of this game. We need to head home and make Sam some dinner. Another sand root for us. Right in our sack. We have a droopy sack, unfortunately. Nobody wants that. Mason is very proud of his word choices. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to these guys real quick. Can we? Yes. Uh-oh, we're running out of ranch. We're gonna have to switch to Italian. Not if you want to send the kid to school, you gotta start paying for their education. BS. Taxes, taxation is theft. Well, thanks, Hank. Maybe. Or there's a lot of subsidies in farming. Okay. It's not where I thought that was going to go, but sure. Alright. So we have to head back. Some of the things in this game also do feel a bit like padding. And I know that that's probably standard for the majority of early RPG games. Space it out a little bit. This one is no exception. There's a lot of wandering back and forth that just kind of seems a little pointless. This kind of looks like Colonel Sanders. Sorry, my brain got a little uh, distracted there. Story of my life. But we need to go home. And make some dinner. Good question. We're going to save here. And then next time, we're going to make some dinner for Sam and I. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Eastward. And if you've enjoyed this series, if you could like the video, comment if you'd like, and subscribe if you haven't. And I will catch you next time. Bye.